Greetings, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us for another online worship with the Guyana District Methodist Church on this the fifth Sunday in Lent. I am Christine Spencer, your religious for today. Kindly stand as we sing our choral in Troit, Change My Art, O God. Let us say the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Join me as we sing the hymn, Man of Sorrow, What's a Name, numbered 109 in a voice and praise. join in a prayer of adoration, confession, and prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are great. And Lord God, you are great and worthy to be praised. And so Lord God, we take this moment, Lord God, to give you thanks. Lord God, to adore you for who you are and who you continue to be, Lord God. You are ever constant and never changing, Lord God. You are the omnipotent, omniscient, and ever-present God. And so, Lord God, we pray that this morning, as we take time to worship you, that our praise and worship would be of glory unto you, Lord God, and will be acceptable, Lord God. And we pray this prayer in your Son, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Our prayer of confession. As that we silently confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness.
Let us pray. God of rainbows and puddles, lover of snow showers and clear blue skies, we confess to you and to one another that the many things we fail to live, live like or the lives that we're supposed to live or the life that you want us to live, we make ourselves busy with many things and neglect to listen to your voice. All too often we see the worst in the world around us and look past your signs of hope. We are quick to voice our dissent with one another and refuse to see your face in the persons with whom we disagree. We focus on our own hurt, anger, and disappointment and close our hearts to your transforming grace. O oh, holy light of the world, forgive us. Open our eyes to your endless possibilities. Give us courage to listen for your call to us. Take our hearts to stone and make them new again with your holy love. Amen. Receive the assurance of pardon. The good news is that all who in Christ trust in him will have their sins forgiven and receive eternal life. As you hold this faith, I declare that you are set free from all sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Prayer of Thanksgiving. And Heavenly Father, you are the God who provides. Even when things may seem bleak, Lord God, or we may choose to lose hope, Lord God, you continue to provide. So Lord God, we give you thanks for the luxury of family. We give you thanks, Lord God, for the luxury of health. And we give you thanks, Lord God, for the finances. We give you thanks, Lord God, for your continuous provision. Even in times when, Lord God, we fail to say thank you or we fail to see that you've answered a prayer, Lord God, we ask that you forgive us and we give you thanks, Lord God. Lord God, help us to continue to have a heart of gratitude be thankful for the provision that you continue to make, Lord God, and develop a heart of content. So, Lord God, we ask that you continue to be faithful to us, Lord God, and we give you thanks for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. The ministry of the word, let us together pray the color. Gracious Father, you gave up your son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Savior's blood, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Testament reading comes to us from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, reading from verse 31 through to 34. A new covenant. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will, give, I will forgive their iniquities, and remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsive reading comes from Psalm 119, 9 to 16. Here beginneth the reading. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With, With my whole heart I seek, I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees, as much as in all riches. 
I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it's now and never shall be, world without end. Amen. Our epistle reading is taken from Hebrews chapter 5, reading from verse 5 through to verse 10. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now stand and sing the hymn, My Song is Love Unknown, numbered 89. The Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 12, reading from verse 20 through 
33. Glory to you, O God. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was about to die. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, it's a joy being with you today as we continue to journey in this holy season of length. The passion of the cross is the end result. The victory over sin and death. And today we focus on the glory of God being revealed. The glory of God being revealed. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. Let us pray. Master, speak. Your servants hear it. As we wait for your gracious word, your word is that lamp at our feet and light for our part. So speak to us even now, we pray, asking that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts may be found acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen and amen. As we look at our reading today from the gospel according to St. John chapter 12, it would help us to put it into focus a bit, context. We hear that there were some Greeks who asked to see Jesus. They made a request to see Jesus. This request, my brothers and sisters, came as a result of them being present at the festival, joining with the other Jews in worship of God. Now, chapters 11 told the story of the raising of Lazarus. If you look at chapter 11 from verse 1 to 14, you will hear, you will see the story of Lazarus. And this caused the council, known as the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders, the high priest, it caused them to plot to kill Jesus. In chapter 12 of John, it opens with the story of Mary anointing Jesus at Lazarus' home. 
an anointing which Jesus said was for the day of my burial, quote-unquote, in verse 1 to 8 of chapter 12. The chief priests are now plotting to kill Lazarus as well as Jesus because it was on account of him being raised from the dead that the Jews were decreasing and more and more persons were believing in Jesus. Many of them had gathered to support Martha and Mary on the death of their brother Lazarus. And so they were there. They saw firsthand when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth from the tomb. And he did. And so the numbers were growing for those who believed and followed Jesus. And the council, the Jewish group, began to suffer losses. So there was envy. They wanted to get rid of Jesus. They wanted to get rid of Lazarus, the evidence of this Jesus and the signs and wonders that he performed. Brothers and sisters, this followed by Palm Sunday, the story of the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And we recognize that this event on Palm Sunday stirred the people even more. Not the words that closed the section that relates to this event. Verse 19 in chapter, chapter 12. Verse 19 says to us, Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Look, the world has gone after him. They were annoyed. 18 said that it was also because they heard that he was performing this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The sign, Lazarus being restored. And so, the anger was kindled and they wanted to get rid of Jesus. It is this feeling of powerlessness in the face of the charismatic potential that Jesus was put under pressure by these leaders. It is this feeling of powerlessness in the face of a charismatic, potentially dangerous figure that impels the Pharisees to seek Jesus' death. <laughs> Ironically, Lazarus' resurrection will lead to Jesus' death. But this is why he came, my brothers and sisters. So that's the context in which we now approach our text for today. Sir, we want to see Jesus. The words that was expressed by the group of Greeks who had gathered for the worship of God in the, fest in the, in the festival. These Greeks would have been from Greece or the Decapolis, which is a set of small cities, like 10 group of cities together nearing um, Galilee. So they had a large Greek population. And given the Passover setting, it is likely that they are Jewish proselytes, circumcised converts to the Jewish faith, who are permitted to participate in the Jewish festivals. So they had a link. They were interested in the Jewish religion. But now, hearing of Jesus, hearing of the many things that he was doing and the lives that were being transformed, they wanted perhaps a personal encounter. They wanted to inquire more. And so they asked to see Jesus. My brothers and sisters, 
Philip, when he heard, went and invited his fellow disciples. And together, they went to Jesus. So Andrew and Philip comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, there are some Greeks who want to see you. And Jesus is answered. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. The glorification team presents itself. It is time. The hour has come. You see, the approach to the cross ultimately led to the glorification of the Lord Jesus Christ. Him accomplishing the work that the Father sent him to do. So, it may be assumed that these guests who wanted to see Jesus was prompted by a desire to learn from him, as I mentioned earlier, rather than mere curiosity. They wanted a closer encounter. They wanted to learn more about this Jesus. It is clear to me that their desire would have highlighted some important aspect of Jesus' ministry for us all. When Philip and Andrew went to Jesus and asked the question, and Jesus' response to them indicated to us that one, their visit illustrated the truth of the Pharisees. They look for a world that has gone after him. When I mention the world that has gone after him, this was the statement they shared on Palm Sunday. Look, the world has gone after him. We're losing ground. Secondly, their inquiry of Jesus, their visit prompted Jesus to acknowledge that his hour has come. And thirdly, their visit prompted Jesus to announce that when he is lifted up, he will draw all people to himself. An obvious reference to the Gentiles being included in the gift of salvation. Friends, the truth of the Pharisees' statement. Let's examine it a bit. The world has gone after him. Christ came to proclaim the fact that the kingdom of heaven has come near. He came to bring the good news to the poor, release to the captive, and recovery of sight to the blind. And because he was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, the glory of God rested upon him. And so all that he did, wherever he went, it was like a magnet drawing persons as they experienced the power and the presence of God at work in and through him. They responded by coming in numbers. Yes, some had ulterior motives, but by and large, his message of salvation and the signs and wonders that were being done through him as a result of the presence of God, the glory of God in his life, prompted the Pharisees to make that statement, which is so true, the world has gone after him. They were jealous because they were losing ground. They were losing ground. And the work of God was being accomplished. Why Jesus came to make the difference. It is difficult to imagine 
how they would have understood the opening words of Jesus. They would hardly have been so well informed as to as John's readers about the significance of the hour that Jesus pointed to. This hour, the hour has come. But in the midst of it all, it is clear that the glorification theme, as Jesus pointed out in his response, the wheat, but he said, the grain must fall into the earth and die before it produces. The glorification. You might have heard the phrase before. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. You see my glory, but you don't know my story. The struggles that Jesus endured facing the cross as a result of the way in which the religious leaders felt. But when he spoke, he explained, it is for this reason that I have come. To the second point, the visit prompted Jesus to acknowledge his hour has come. The hour to be glorified. The hour to accomplish the task that the Father has set for him. And he gave the example of the single grain. If it dies, then it bear much more fruit. He says, those who lose their life will gain it. Those who love their life, sorry, will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. We see some contrast taking place. Whosoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. So not only that Jesus will be glorified, but those who serve him will also share in that glory. He speaks of his death in order that the glorification may take place. Because as the seed dies and then comes many more, when he dies, when he gave his life, so many more lives will be saved. As he take it up again at the resurrection, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. I will draw all people to myself. The evidence of his resurrection, being lifted on high, being exalted in the presence of the Father as the disciples stood and looked and the angels spoke. Magnet, drawing persons to himself. The name of Jesus, to which every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess was rapidly expanding throughout the region. The stories as told by the eyewitnesses, not the false stories, the evidence given. And so even as Jesus shared, when Mary anointed him, she is preparing me for my day of burial. All of these things, my brothers and sisters, brought the acknowledgement. This is coming, and it is coming for this reason, Jesus said. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. The words of Jesus. In the garden he prayed, let this cup pass from me if it is possible. Nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. Giving God, the Father, the glory. Father, let your will be done. Father, glorify your name. Even as Jesus himself 
would experience the glory of God through his obedience, through the sacrifice that he would have made. Friends, thirdly, the visit prompted Jesus to announce that when he is lifted up, he will draw all people to himself. Salvation for all. John chapter 3. Whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So that salvation is now full and free for all to share in, to experience. Jesus made it possible, brothers and sisters. As Jesus spoke about his glory, it is at this point that John records Jesus' awareness of the arrival of the hour which his uh, gospel has been leading us to. There is a clear connection between the troubled soul of Jesus here and the agony of the Garden of Gethsemane, as I mentioned earlier. But friends, in answer to the question, what shall I say? The two possibilities are given. A prayer to be saved from the hour, which is natural, but unthinkable in the light of the total mission of Jesus. Or a prayer that the Father's name will be glorified. The emphasis on the latter is wholly in line with John's use of the glorification theme. It is for God's glory. Whatever he did, and so too for us, you and I, as we journey along this life, whatever we do ought to be for the honor and glory of Almighty God. If I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people unto myself. There are three reactions, friends. We are told to the heavenly voice that was heard after Jesus shared together with those who were around him. When he says, Father, glorify your name, the voice spoke. I have. I have. And I will. I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there, they heard it and they said, it is thunder, while others say, an angel has spoken to him. But Jesus himself, Jesus himself gave the explanation. He gave the explanation that this is God's doing. This voice is not for my sake, but it is for your sake. Again, that you may come to believe you may come to understand. So the reactions, the reactions were there. An angel, a thunder, thunder. But Jesus explained. It was Jesus alone who recognized the voice was for the sake of others. But because they had not heard the message, Jesus explained for their benefit the meaning of the voice speaking. Now, now is the time. Now is the honor. It points more precisely to the commencement of the hour. It is, my brothers and sisters, immediately identified as the time for judgment. God acting on behalf of his people in this world. Jesus glorified the Father in his action. You and I today, we are called to live our lives pleasing in the sight of God and to do our part to lift the name of Jesus. Because remember he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people unto myself. Our lives must demonstrate the fact that we will lift Jesus in what we do. We will be his witnesses. We will lead others to come into that right relationship with him. 
we will do our part in aiding in the lifting of Jesus so that others may be drawn unto him. May God bless you, my brothers, my sisters, as we continue to journey reflecting God's glory. Amen. The choir will lead us in our song of response. Where he leads me, I will follow. Join us in singing. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your word today. And Lord, we pray that even as you lead us, reflecting and revealing your glory, that we will indeed follow and seek to do your will. Your coming to earth is in order that we may be saved from our sins. As you are lifted up, O oh God, you promise that you will draw all men unto you. And so we pray that you may equip us to share in this lifting, that our testimonies, our witness of you, that as we go, Lord God, truly your church will grow. So may your word take root and produce fruit in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, we are delighted that you took the time to join us in this act of worship.
We welcome you warmly on behalf of the people called Methodist in the Guyana district. To those celebrating significant milestones this week, birth, wedding anniversaries, or something significant, we join with you in saying to God be the glory and pray that your day, your moment will be an enjoyable and reflective one as we continue to give God thanks for what he has done in and through your lives. We pray for those who are ill. We ask for God's healing touch to come upon you. But we invite you to join us in our various congregations for our Palm Sunday celebration and Holy Week services. There will be joint services in some of the circuits as it relates to Holy Thursday. Good Friday, we ask of you to join in with us as we remember Jesus' death on the cross. And more so, on Easter Sunday, the 31st, to join us for the grand celebration of the fact up from the grave he arose. The best time in the Christian calendar. So let us come together and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord as we worship in our various congregations. There will be children's Palm Sunday rally in many of the circuits as well. So we ask you to be a part of that. In Georgetown, it will be held at the Kingston Congregation on Palm Sunday at 3.30 in the afternoon. So God bless you and do join us next Sunday for another divine worship experience from the Methodist Church. Let us go to God in our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, creator of all that is seen and unseen, we draw near to you, Lord God, as a church seeking your intervention in the challenges we faced in our world. Lord, we think of those countries that are affected by wars. As a result of the bombs and the bullets, the destruction, the loss of lives. Lord, Father God, we think of those who hunger and the thirst, literally. Those who are dying because of a lack of food supplies, lack of water. We think of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, in Palestine, parts of the Gaza Strip. Lord God, we think of those who are affected as a result of natural disasters, floods. Lord God, we pray for your peace. We pray for your comfort. We pray for your providence. We lift before you, O oh God, the children and the families of those who have been kidnapped in Nigeria. Lord God, we ask the question, what is becoming of man? The consciences of man, the children, defenseless children, are being affected in so many areas of our world. But we pray, O oh God, for your peace for those families. We pray, Lord, that you may touch the hearts of the perpetrators, that you will give them, O oh God, a rude awakening, that they may come to the realization that these are your creation, Father God. Act, O oh Lord, as only you can. Protect them. And we pray for their release, Lord God. We pray that wars may cease. We pray, O oh God, that those who are in need of relief, of aid, may receive, and those who have, Lord God, may find a way to sharing and sharing with those who do not have. Lord, you have given us enough in our world for all to benefit from. But because of greed of some, others are affected. But Lord God, we ask for your peace. And we ask for your intervention. In this holy season, Lord God, when hearts are to be softened towards you, when humanity, Lord God, should be seeking a closer walk with you. But the devil is rampant. Lord, use your people to put him in his place. We pray, O oh God, for the nation of Haiti and all that is taking place there at this time. 
the transition that is on the way. Lord God, restore hope, we pray. Restore peace, we pray. Restore order and justice, we pray. Lord, have your way in the countries of the world that are so torn apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for this dear land of Guyana. We pray for the government and people of this nation. We pray for our industries, the natural resources that you have blessed us with, and more so our human resources. Father, in a special way, we bring to you our teachers. We hear of the breakdown in negotiation with the Ministry of Education. But we ask, O oh God, that good sense will prevail, that our children may not be affected because of strike once again. But Lord God, we ask that you will break down the barriers, you will open the closed doors, and you will reopen negotiations so that all can benefit from the blessings of this land. Lord, we are grateful for the teachers and for all that they impart. We are grateful, O oh God, for the government that you have placed to exercise control at this time. But we ask, Lord, that you may help them to remember that ultimate power belongs to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we lift before you our church in all the various sections. We pray for the unity of the body of faith, that we may stand together, O oh God, to face the challenges, to confront the works of the enemy, and, O oh God, to fight against the systems and the situations that bring oppression to your people. Lord, unite us in body, mind, and spirit that we may in one accord say to the devil, get thee hence, and allow, O oh God, your word to be proclaimed in every corner of this land, that this nation can indeed experience the salvation of our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we lift before you those who are sick. We lift before you our children, we lift before you the vulnerable. And we pray, Lord, for your intervention, that your peace, your healing virtue, and your comfort may rest on those who need it. Father, continue to journey with us as we go from strength to strength, as we go from day to day, with a desire for growth in your kingdom. Use us, O oh God, as individuals, use us as a church, use us as a community of faith to make a difference wherever we find ourselves. So have your way, even as we pray, in the name of him who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, number 99.
May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you and do join us next week for another divine worship.